The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports that teens between the age of 12 and 20 account for 11% of alcohol consumed in the U.S., despite the legal drinking age of 21 years old. If United States citizens become adults at 18, why are certain rights, such as drinking, still restricted at that age? Americans under the age of 21 will undoubtedly continue to drink Ill illegally, and as a college student myself, I am confident that lowering the drinking age to 18 can potentially create safer circumstances for all teens and college students. You are all college students, and I'm sure many of you have experienced issues relative to the minimum drinking age of 21 in the United States. Like I said, underage drinkers account for 11% of all alcohol consumption in the United States, 90% of which is considered binge drinking. According to freelance journalist and contributing editor at The Atlantic, Wayne Curtis, because underage college students are unlikely to be able to buy drinks at parties, bars, concerts, etc., they are likely to engage in pre-gaming. Pre-gaming, a short period of binge drinking before going out, very often results in dangerous overconsumption, which cannot usually be matched by one's metabolism. The CDC also reports that binge drinking is associated with unintentional injuries, such as car accidents, intentional injuries such as sexual assault, alcohol poisoning, liver disease, and much more. The minimum drinking age has resulted in less driving fatalities. However, Dave Archer, a psychiatrist and fellow of the American Psychiatric Association, claims that despite less teens drinking, they drink more when they do. Teens are likely to drink whether or not it is legal, and according to Henry Weschler, who was the principal investigator of the school's college alcohol study, the heavy drinking styles of many underage students is a potential result of the minimum drinking age in the United States. Resident physician Drew K. Saylor says that groups such as the Amethyst Initiative argue that lowering the minimum drinking age will reduce binge drinking on college campuses. Saylor elaborates, saying, the recent Amethyst Initiative argues that a minimum legal drinking age of 21 has created a culture of heavy alcohol use on college campuses by making drinking clandestine and extreme. Curtis believes that since underage people drink and will continue to drink, it is likely that they will choose unsafe venues simply because they have nowhere else to go. He continues saying, Offering an alternative changes the dynamic in which vulnerable students feel that they have no choice but venture into potentially unsafe places. Like I discussed earlier, pre-gaming, a form of binge drinking, poses high potential for negative consequences of drinking, such as alcohol poisoning. Moreover, Curtis concludes that by lowering the drinking age, extreme pre-gaming is not as likely to occur. According to Curtis, lowering the drinking age brings drinking back into a larger social sphere, which allows for better, better examples of how to drink in a more open discussion of what's sensible and what's not, a discussion that's impossible to have when drinking starts by jumping over a wall and into the shadows. This evidence shows that there are many benefits to reducing the legal drinking age in the United States. Now that you've heard the pros of reducing the, the drinking age, how does this affect all of us? We are all underage college students and many of us are directly and negatively affected by the minimum drinking age. We face dangers <laughs> relative to legal issues, binge drinking, unsafe drinking environments, etc. every time we go out simply because we are not of age. And to believe that underage students aren't going to drink is ridiculous. <clears throat> Our generation will continue to face dangers relative to the minimum drinking age, and it is necessary to reduce this in order to prevent dangers on college campuses in the future. We can now see why reducing the drinking age is a possible solution to many dangers that not only college students but all underage drinkers face. Now what can we do to convince others that this is necessary? Minimum drinking age has had many benefits since being implemented many years ago. However, it has negatively affected underage drinkers as well, especially college students. Reducing the drinking age can prevent binge drinking, drinking in unsafe environments, and many other dangers. It is important for administration, administrators to understand the difference between bias and the genu genuine benefits that can be reaped from lowering the drinking age. By doing this, we can prevent consequences of the drinking age that college, college students experience every day. As Wayne Curtis says, college students under the age of 21 are going to drink, period. To believe otherwise is to believe in unicorns. Thank you.